Please start in two minutes, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. I yes, hope you have uh, uh, connected to your labs and you have deployed all the things, guys. Any questions on that? Any queries, any questions, any aspects, guys? I hope you have deployed that in your lab. Have you connected to your labs yesterday? Or you want yes, time? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, it will be connected. Connected, huh? You have deployed those applications which I showed you yesterday. Yes, Wireshark and Nmap. Yeah. Did you scan certain things on your server itself? Tried Google. At least I tried Google. <laughs> okay. Fine. So just a sec, let me check. before we start guys uh, i will show you certain things okay related to uh, creation of your own uh, server guys okay and um, uh, uh, we will uh, scan our server itself okay so there are two things I want to show you. Uh, one is uh, how to deploy a web server. Um, important is not that. Important is like when services are deployed, okay, how they are deployed in um, uh, on the server side, okay, and how do we scan that particular server? So we will create one simple website, okay, and we will be deploying it on the server, and then uh, we will see two things. One is a uh, general server which we will deploy on port number 80 and the second thing which we will see is how to generate a self-signed certificate and then how to uh, uh, what uh, deploy that server as a secure server out there okay so uh, certificates will always be with us guys in our lectures okay and uh, later on I'll be taking this topic separately where uh, certificate authority, what are the different types of certificate authorities and all that we will be discussing those things. Okay. So first thing is guys, we need to have our own website. Okay. And uh, for that, I'll be creating a folder here. Okay. My web. Okay. And inside that, uh, I'll be creating uh, a code. So basically all the websites, okay, they are designed uh, to be uh, what I can say uh, in HTML format basically, okay. So uh, I'm just going to enter a basic port.
So simple code guys, uh, start, start of HTML, uh, have some body inside. There are a lot of things we can do. Guys. Okay, I don't want to go into that, but this is like a basic website I'm going to create. This is my first website. This web service deployed on IS, okay? And I'm going to save this file. Okay, as index dash HTML. So this is the first page uh, of my website, which I'm going to deploy and let's see. So here it is, guys. Okay, this is my website out here. Okay, and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Okay, and I'm going to paste it in a specific location. I want to show you that location. It might not be there right now, guys. Uh, once I deploy this web server, uh, yeah, no, it is not there here, guys. Okay, so what we are going to do is uh, to keep this uh, in a container of a web server, we need to have a web server, guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy server manager. And inside this server manager, I'm going to deploy the IS web server. Okay. So add roles, role base, user one. And here, uh, guys, you will notice uh, here we have web server IS. The moment I select, it will say, okay, you will require this. I say add features. Uh, the default selection guys okay i'm not going to select everything so this is my web server web server is okay just this the default selection nothing else then say next no selection here but uh, no uh, selection of features here guys okay and i'm going to say next next nothing here as well next and install just the default installation Guys, just focus on this. Uh, then I will give you time, ample amount of time, guys. Okay, to do this. Okay, so it's not like more than 15, 20 minutes. We'll be doing this. Previously, uh, the IS was not that secure, guys. Uh, these versions, IS 7, IS 8, we consider as more secure. Previously, it used to install all the services. Okay, and then uh, as we know that any particular software or any server or services which we deploy, the more the software it is in that, okay, the more the vulnerabilities it will have, okay. So obviously any specific service or code when we deploy it should be lean lean means it should be agile okay small one uh, the footprint should be small okay and that provides uh, security guys okay so i think it is done so i just say close so once we do that guys okay you will see here i see the is out here okay and uh, we can deploy the the server from here tools okay you can open up the is manager here 
or t or you can run a command i init mgr okay but then now okay just go in tools and we can just open up is manager and this is your uh, is 10 guys okay so 7 onwards it became little bit restrictive secure and you will see the is 10 out here okay there is one more thing which might have changed okay so if i go in c drive <laughs> Okay, I see one folder now, inetpub here. It was not there previously, right? So inetpub is a public folder, okay, which has certain policies, okay, pre-configured, okay, to deploy your own website. So if I go in inetpub, there is something called as www root, okay, this is where your web server directory is kept. By default, there is a website, uh, default website, which is already deployed. But instead of this, we will have our own website, right? So we will paste our folder here. So this is my web. Inside that my web, okay, we have our website, okay? So let me just open up this index.html. This is a website which we created, guys. HTML. This is my first website. This web server is deployed on IS and HTML. Okay, those who have not written, please note it down. Cool. Now guys, I will go back to the web server manager. Okay, and here, if I go under my machine, okay, you will see sites. And inside that, there is a default website. Okay, the first thing which we will do is, we will uh, basically stop this website guys. Okay, because uh, understand this, that you can't have multiple websites uh, with the same IP and port number running, okay, out there. So we will be creating a website from scratch. We already have a code. We will be creating that. So I say add a website. So here the site name. So I give the name first web. Okay, and physical path. Where is the directory where you have this? So I go in C drive. I net pub www root. My web. Okay. And then here you see the protocol it is http protocol any specific ip you want to give okay port number 80 host name right now i'm not giving anything because if you have dns you can give that and i say start web site immediately okay so i say okay let's see it is saying is another site is there okay uh, are you sure you want to do this yes so this is my first web which is deployed out here. Port number 80, if you see out here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this. So I'm going to go in CMDB IP config. And here 10.5.0.5, right? So I will just open up the browser. HTTP colon slash slash 10.5.0.5. Yeah, so here you will see guys, uh, we see the whole code. Okay, this is my first website. This web server is displayed on, deployed on IIS. You will see at the left side, we have a non-secure connection because uh, it is a HTTP connection guys. Okay, and I'm able to view this. Guys, please do this. Okay, I will wait for you for five minutes. Once done, just uh, put up thumbs up. Okay, so that we can move on, please.
done guys do update once done Any issues? Done. Very good. Someone has completed, I think. Yep. Everyone else. Eti. Done. Eti, just a small request from my side. Yeah. Um, I joined late. Uh, would you mind to show it again? Because uh, I missed yeah, the yeah, first. Yeah. Surely. Sorry for that. No problem. The only thing you need to do is OK, we created one folder here. My web. OK. Mm -hmm. Inside mm -hmm. that we created one simple page. OK, of code uh that we will be deployed as a web sub website okay so this is a code which i wrote simple okay html whatever you want to write and then end html that's it okay uh note it down Once we do that, we require a web server, okay, on which we will deploy this code. Our server is required 
Why? Because multiple people will connect to see this data in HTML format, right? So we require a web server. So what we did, we opened up server manager. Okay, here it is. Okay. And then we added a service. So in the dashboard, we said add roles and features. Okay. And then we press next, role base, next, next. And then we selected this web server. That's it. Okay. And whatever selection is there is a default selection. I didn't select anything special. Okay. Just this. And then it will ask you, do you want to select anything? Just don't select anything. Just say next, 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 next. And then close. That's it. It will install this service, the IS service. Okay. Just wait till it installs the service. So do that. I will wait for you. Uh, uh, if you want to open the server manager, you can just go in search and type server manager. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Do this, then I will tell you once done, tell me, I will show you the next step. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Tell me. Yeah. So Yeti, I have uh, I also got disconnected in between. So I created uh -huh. the folder and installed this feature. Uh, where do we have to place that folder? I will I will come. Okay. Oh, one more uh, participant is having issues. So I'm guiding her. So I'm I'm at a step okay. where we have just installed the IS server. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will show you. Yeah. So once done, please update so that I can show you. Once the service is yeah, installed. My installation and uh, folder creation on desktop uh, and the file is done. It's done, right? Okay. Right. The service you have installed, right? Yeah. Uh, service okay, has okay. installed. This okay. uh, IS okay. server is installed. Okay, no problem. Wait, just wait two minutes. Yeti yeah, Himant here. I'm mm -hmm. having trouble connecting to the uh, remote desktop. So okay, which keep IP? On, keep on connecting. Uh, let me ping you in the chat. Hey, here you can see four two twenty four two three one three nine. Which number? Ten. Oh, ten. Huh? This is not working, is it? Four twenty four. Uh, okay. Looks like now started. Okay. Uh, it is showing okay. reconnecting to this IP. Uh, okay. Let's see if it works. Okay. Uh, looks like I disconnected the VPN, then it started working. It started, huh? Uh -huh. VPN might yeah. not allow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. I hope the service is installed. Okay. So the next step is this that this particular folder, okay, we will just copy it and then we will go in the C drive. Okay. In C drive, we will have one folder called as INET pub. This is like an internet public folder. Okay. So I'll go inside this. In this, we will go in www root and then we will paste it here. Okay. Cool. Now, once we paste it here in this location, then we need to open up. Okay, what is that? Remote desktop cannot connect to remote computer. Okay, Shriya, can can you check uh, your VPN or something like security related aspect? Uh, if you can check it out or try with another IP. So we have two machines here available. Try other machine. If same thing is happening, then there is some issue from your side, your machine. Yeah, I think I'm going to try the user two. Yeah, so 205 is your IP, right? Okay, just check it out. That is, uh, I gave one of these IPs or user two, I think, to someone. Mm -hmm. oh, the second one was given to me only, so I'm. You only, right? Huh? Then I'll check it out. Very good, Kaushar. Thank you. Cool. Okay. So, guys, coming back. The next step is we need to. Uh, once the IS service is installed, we need to manage it, right? So to manage it, you can go in tools and here you just click on Internet Information Services Manager, OK? And then this will open up, OK? This will open up. In that, the first thing you will do is stop this website, guys. So just say stop, do a right click. Manage website, stop. Okay, stop it. And then you need to create a new website. So just say add website. In that you can name anything my web too. Okay. And physical path is nothing but where you have copied the folder. So you'll go in C drive, INET pub, WW root, my web. You'll select this. Just say okay. That's it. Protocol is HTTP. Uh, don't select anything port number 80 and then here you will see start website immediately just say okay that's it your website will be live one more guys very important thing remember the name of the file will always be this index okay this is the first page okay so i don't want to go into the web, how web services are deployed but then uh, because then otherwise if you give another name then it will not work okay so please okay the name will be index.html okay please note it down hmm. so now once done your website will be here running you just need to check the ip address of yours with ip config command okay and then go in the browser and just give the ip address that's it Now, guys, remember this, this, this particular deployment is a very simple deployment. OK, there is no application involved here. There is no database involved here. There is just a file which we have shared in public. Using HTML, OK, understand the basic concepts, guys. OK, so basically um, uh, if a hacker wants to hack, then that's a, just a page. OK, he will be able to hack. 
in the real world, uh, there are different tiers architecture like web app and DB, right? So web server is connected to the app server. Websites are deployed in the application and then they are deployed out there. Actually, application is here as well. Okay, you will see there is something called as the application pool. If you select here, you will see my application pool is running the first web. It is a .NET pool. Basically, you will see here .NET is here. OK, so if you have any .NET applications or something like that, uh, IS web server deploys it. OK, so you don't even require an application server, but application servers are specialized server which handles like millions of connections guys. OK, so for that you require a specialized application server, which is a different server, which might be in different server altogether. OK. So now guys, once this is deployed, this is my website which is deployed on IS web server and it is not secure. Not secure means whatever data goes to and fro uh, can be recorded guys. Okay, Aman, you have something. Very good, very good Aman. Okay, yeah, you can run with a uh, IP, a public IP or you can guys run it with a local IP, right? Better to use local IP. That's fine. No problem. So now guys, what we are going to do is because we have our own server now, I can open my end map. And I will try to scan my server itself. OK, let's see that. So yesterday we installed end map. Right? You have some error. Uh, check your uh, the page name guys index.html please. Uh, OK, check the index.html, the name of the page. It will always be index.html, OK? So target is 10.5.0.5. Intent scan, I will scan it. Let's see what do I find it. Yeah, so it has discovered these ports. It will give me more information. OK, and map done. What do I find? OK. OK, so I see port 80. IS, OK, you'll see Microsoft IS and you'll see it has uh, perfectly found out the version that is 10.0. OK, and here I see. Uh, there are potentially risky methods like trace. OK, Microsoft IS 10 doesn't have a title that's fine okay i can have one more scan guys okay and it will be on tcp ports okay so i am i'm interested in all tcp ports here you will see a lot of ports are opening up now
Yeah, and I've done anything which is like something interesting, I find. So you will see some information is like I get more detailed information here, guys. Uh, in port 80, it is a simple normal thing. OK, I'm not getting anything extra out of it. I can go in ports here. You will see port 80. OK, state is open. OK, great. OK, so now the next step out here might be that I open up Wireshark, guys. And I want to show you something. So once I understand the port is there, then I will try to capture the traffic. OK, now, there are two ways I can do that. There are two ways I can do that, guys. OK, remember the developer tools. So if I say more tools, I can do developer tools and I can check a lot of things here. OK, so so network, I can fetch all information here, all right? This we saw, OK? This is like uh, you can go through it and understand it more better, OK? Uh, here I will be monitoring on the Ethernet traffic, OK? And the focus is again this particular call. OK, so I will just say. 10.5.0.5. OK, I'm doing it and then once done, I will stop Wireshark guys. Because I want that interesting traffic which is running on port number 80. OK, so let's see if I was able to capture it or not. OK. Here you see the port number, guys. OK, whatever was captured. So the interesting thing is let's search for port number 80. Where is port number 80, 80, 80, 80? Okay. I can try a parameter. Port 80 is right here. Yeah, no, it will be HTTP, right? Any HTTP communication. Here it is, guys. OK, so I'm just shaking for port 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. I'm not getting that because I think. Uh, interested in HTTP. Yeah, I think here it is. Uh, but then again, you will see here source and destination. This is like 168, 63, something different. OK, it's not that interesting traffic I'm looking out for. There are other traffic as well, guys. OK, so what happens is this that I'm not able to capture it. OK, what I will do is OK. Let me just open up this. Search it and I will do a scan. OK. I will do a scan again. Continue without saving. Yeah. 10.5.0.5. Okay, I'm connected. I will stop it. The less traffic is better. Did I capture it or not? OK, I think. OK, what is this traffic? OK, let me check. So here, uh, OK, I have a HTTP call uh, going on. Let us check. So what we do is HTTP is open, right, guys? OK, so uh, interestingly, if I do click on this 
and I do follow TCP stream. OK, I will see a lot of things here. OK, so there was a lot of information here, guys. OK, I see this information. See, it's open guys out here. I see a lot of other information. This is like 168. OK, so there is another thing which is going on out here. OK, and I see the whole data, OK, which is being sent and received, guys. OK, this was not important for me. OK, the important out here is uh, I'll just close this is my traffic. OK, my website, guys. OK, I'm not saying it right now. OK, so I'll just say HTTP. Let's see. So this is what I'm getting. OK. later on so guys the main thing is this when we open this up okay any http stream or any http traffic you will see what is happening out here you see the whole communication and what information related to that particular http you will even see the data okay via which okay we open up okay all the things like for example, there are two uh, Google out here. Okay, so if I say www, it's one is HTTP and other is HTTPS. So again, uh, it redirected to HTTPS guys. Okay, connection is secure. So HTTP is considered dangerous because it doesn't provide any security as such. You don't you are not sure that this website is surely the website I'm connecting first of all because it doesn't provide any identity. OK, identity is provided by a entity or a digital identity is provided by a certificate. So anywhere you go, if you go to a HTTP website, don't work on it. OK, because we are not sure that that is the organization's website or it is a site where uh, you can say it's a proper website or it is not capturing any specific data from you or that organization's website might have been compromised there might be a malware and there might be issues so the only thing i want to show you is when you have a http website it it is a dangerous site don't visit it okay or don't view it altogether anyone can see what is happening going to and fro out there okay and then it compromises everything okay so that was the main concept i will capture the traffic and show it to you that's not a problem later on okay why because it might be a local machine out here so we will do that okay so understand these basic things guys okay it's very dangerous out here so uh, today we saw http tomorrow we will continue and i will show you the certificates as well okay let's continue yeah, so continuing guys uh, out here. And please deploy it and complete it. OK, understand it like uh, monitor the traffic on port number 80. OK, see if you are able to capture it, nothing like it. OK, uh, the communication should be the IP and port number 80. OK, so remember that. OK, just you should get I'm getting some different IP. OK, but then uh, I will capture it. OK, and then let's see. OK will do it so no time for debugging as such so today uh, we will uh, see certain things uh, important things in cyber security in healthcare perspective okay there are two major institutions which were hacked basically guys okay singapore health system okay and uh, the aims aims is in delhi right so that was also under cyber attack okay and uh, threats related uh, associated with EHR and PII data, personal data basically, and risk associated with patient data and privacy. Okay. So healthcare, I don't need to tell you guys. Okay, uh, theoretically, it is very critical. Uh, people can use healthcare data for various malicious aspects basically. So um, there is a confidentiality and even doctors, uh, they are under oath, OK, uh, related to that particular data. They never share even legally. They are protected guys. OK, I don't know if you know, but um, uh, even if uh, the government bodies want to have certain information, they need to have a court order, OK, to view that data that critical that data is guys, OK? So basically, um, um, this data is interesting for the attackers. Why? Because then they can sell that data or they can uh, 
manipulate that data or they can um, use that data okay for financial gains out there okay so again different types of attacks can happen phishing attacks we had already discussed on that malware ransomware okay different types of attacks that can happen denial of service data breaches out there okay so uh, you need to understand that when you handle the data okay it is the pe people or person okay who handles that data so you need to educate the employees about um, the type of data they are handling okay how critical it is so cybersecurity training related basic understanding of handling of data is important uh, any specific data or a file when you do encryption or when you protect it use strong passwords okay again software update and firewalls you need to use antivirus software is critical i told you even if you are viewing the data in a mobile you should have an antivirus there as well okay um any specific data which might have sensitive information you should encrypt it okay encryption and decryption we saw that when i was there in hyderabad symmetric and asymmetric in uh, encryption as i told you encryption i will take it in separate manner i will show you the encryption how it is done and how it is deployed okay have a plan in place uh, in case of cyber attack basically okay so obviously the moment there is attack okay you should have a plan ready what needs to be done what needs to be protected what needs to be isolated has to be known guys okay so one of the attacks uh, two attacks rather we will see so the singapore health system cyber attack okay are two examples okay let's see so the singapore health system cyber attack took place in 2018 uh, again guys this was uh, this was attack using a stuck next uh, okay code basically and it resulted in the theft of personal data of over 1.5 million patients it means i think singapore is not a big country guys so i think most of uh, the data of most of the people who are in singapore is leaked out there so attack was carried out by a group of hackers who gained access to the sing health network through a phishing attack phishing is like they might have sent a mail and there might be someone uh, in the hospital who might have clicked it okay so once they had access to the network the hackers were able to steal patient data including name address birth days and medical records okay so uh, i don't know the guys i have you seen the movie baby has you have you seen the movie baby everyone anyone who has not seen it okay he can raise your hand guys if you have seen it that's good Okay, so you people have not seen the movie Baby? Yes. Yes. Okay, not seen. Okay, so Baby is like uh, Akshay Kumar's movie. I don't know, Miss. If you are, yeah, like, yeah, I have seen. I, I am a I am a fan of seen. Telugu movies as well, but <laughs> <laughs> so so guys, uh, in that if you see right, they 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 hack into a Chennai hospital, right? and they they backtrack the record uh, of that patient okay so there was a terrorist they need to move him from uh, dubai to uh, okay to india so they do do a backtracking of record and then they redirect the call uh, okay of that hospital and then they do the verification so this see these things happen guys okay and it, it's not like in the movie something superficial is there yeah, they do do that okay and it had it has happened already so singapore you know is a very strict country basically and they are very strict with certain data types right so if that has happened to this system so you can imagine uh, how uh, like what level of attacks are happening across the environment so it's a phishing attack that happened mail you got a url you click on it and then poof okay you lost the network similarly aims you will see okay it happened in 2021 okay and it created a disruption of patient care okay now aims is considered as a pioneer okay in india basically the most critical health care happens in aims only guys okay sorry something happened guys okay one sec one sec ah uh, accidentally i clicked on something guys okay okay so uh, aims uh similar thing but in a different way okay uh, so the attack was carried out by a group of hackers who gained access to aims network through a vulnerability in the network's firewall 
so firewall was not updated guys okay it was not patched and because of that okay there was a vulnerability so once they had access to the network the hackers were able to disrupt the patient care by taking down the government's uh, hospital's electronic medical record system okay so they they brought down the whole system guys i don't know if any data was leaked in this attack but then the moment they brought it down imagine there is a heart surgery that is happening imagine that guys okay it's very critical and like the surgery is like 10 minutes down and then this system goes down what will happen guys okay it's very critical right so so uh, you can't imagine at that moment of time what might have happened out there so it it is important to understand that any healthcare institution or any specific environment okay uh, has to be um, um, handled uh, critically it has to be handled in a proper way uh, we will just check it out okay i want just to check something if we can now okay so uh, i will go to aims okay let's see let's see their website now okay so here let's see their certificate so aims.idu sha256 sha1 okay see guys uh, they are using a open certificate let's encrypt which is not good practice very bad practice guys okay i see a certificate here like a organization at this stature okay should have a very uh, very secure certificate guys it should have a certi secure certificate which i think is worrying out here so here uh, it is expiring on july 2 so april 2023 they had issued it july so april may june july so three months ka free certificate they are using guys it's like awesome man so let's encrypt if you see is a service provider basically who provides free certificates guys see <laughs> so this is like a, a funny story guys okay and I, i'm worried about everything now okay so okay so let's take indian railways guys guys i no way showing you hacking right okay just i'm showing you like uh, even some big organizations okay they they are having some issues ye november 29 22 okay uh, god bless so they are using a government of india ca server guys e mudra rsa rsa okay so this is good they are using a wild card certificate if you see star.indianrail.gov.9 so this is good practice they have their own e ca server e mudra okay it is considered to be secure right now but still if you see at least they are serious guys with certain part of security see e mudra rsa domain okay and then the certificate is there okay so so this has a things guys small small things which any organization okay when we are going to and going through the process um you should have a proper certificate certificates are provided for security and they pro guarantee your certificate the certificate guarantees the data okay uh, data security so uh, if aims was attack okay aims is a very big institution lot of money they have if they can't buy a certificate of 10000 rupees i'm worried about like how their internal if i go deep down again you can we can try to attack aims we can do that guys okay that's not uh, impossible okay so nevertheless so healthcare organizations okay they are uh, targeted continuously okay so here you see in 2021 there were over 450 cyber attacks on healthcare organization 450 uh if you calculate the number of institutions it is like a good number okay uh hackers are constantly developing new techniques okay obviously they are working on it that's what i said basically uh that every time okay there is some point, uh, different type of attack and something is happening all together guys yeah anything yeah 
uh cyber security is an essential in investment for healthcare that is what i told you guys okay if you are going and trying to save money on in it okay it will not benefit you first of all so you should implement strong security controls okay education of uh, handling the portals is important uh, the software has to be updated and you should have a plan in case of uh, cyber attack so you should have all these things okay planned so we will focus on aims later on as well okay uh, we will try to see if there is any vulnerability we will try to see if there is any issue with their website okay and then we'll continue that's not a problem basically okay no one is stopping us from doing that okay uh threats associated with ehr and uh pii data okay so here guys if you see there is a doctor nurse administrator pathology different types okay all of these are critical things okay so users uh sends patient medical records to cloud okay so here you will see uh, this is like a cloud-based uh, electronic health record management system okay and you have a cloud database so attack internal or external gains access okay to medical record tampers medical record so this this creates a very uh dangerous situation uh where in the moment your record is uh, uh compromised okay then uh, it creates a havoc okay in the whole system out there so uh any specific thing uh which is uh, um okay critical to that particular patient which has patient records okay uh, they might have certain ailments okay they might have been prescribed with certain uh medicines out there okay uh anyone can uh, compromise it okay and then uh it can create a havoc guys out there okay. so here uh, you will see what are the threats associated identity theft yes identity theft is another type of attack basically wherein fake identities could be created okay and then uh, insurance can be claimed okay different types of services can be claimed and then obviously um, um uh, it changes the whole scenario guys okay they can apply for credit accounts loans renting up anything you can do okay with this kind of scenarios uh, there might be a financial fraud okay so hackers can use the private data the pii data to commit financial frauds uh, like they can steal money from banks credit cards uh, i don't know uh, there were there is one particular case going on where 256 uh, credit cards were issued and and they were used okay and then uh, there was no person okay uh, who this card was issued to okay they 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 had this identity faked up okay and uh, in that okay um, uh, the bank lost the money okay because uh, uh, obviously uh, fake uh, information was provided out there now god knows okay how this kyc was done guys okay so don't ask me like in today's world when digital kyc and other related uh, uh, verification happens and uh, multiple agency uh, go to your house okay and verify that you are staying there or not so god knows okay how this happened basically but that then still we got it over. so people are working on that case medical identity thefts so hackers can use stolen pii data to commit uh, medical identity theft which can be used to obtain medical services or prescriptions uh, even blackmailing can happen guys okay reputational damage so data breach can damage the reputation of the healthcare organization which happens okay so patients may be hesitant to seek care from an organization that has been hacked and the organization may face fines or penalties from government regulators that happens yeah so obviously that data when it is up with you uh, it creates an issue because you are holding certain data which is very critical and if it is leaked, then obviously penalties and uh, court related aspects that happen. Legal liability is there, always there. Okay. So a data breach can expose a, a healthcare organization to legal li uh, liability. So patients who are harmed by data breach uh, may sue the organization for damages. Yes, you can. Okay. So basically, when you have some data which is very critical um, and that is breached, then obviously there will be issues out there. 
So EHR and PII data, okay, uh, how do you do that? So you need to have security controls. Controls, as I told you again, when human beings are accessing certain things or there are processes which are not defined, if there are no controls, then it is very easy to uh, penetrate into uh, the environment and hack your data. So basic things like firewalls, IDS systems, antivirus, data encryption, okay, all these aspects are important. Employees have to be educated how they handle the data, how they keep the data in some particular aspects. Okay, they need to keep the software updated. Okay, um, they need to understand when they keep certain data somewhere, uh, is it encrypted or not? Only uh, role-based people, okay, who have authorization can access that particular data. All this aspect, okay, needs to be understood and needs to be managed properly, guys. Okay. So what are the risks which are associated with uh, patient and uh, data privacy? Okay, confidentiality. Okay, privacy is important out here. So there are many risks out here. Okay, so one of the risk is data breaches. Um, this might lead to um, confidentiality. Okay, and data privacy related aspects. Okay, so obviously if a data is breached, obviously you are losing the data. Human error, uh, very uh, one of the things which we always uh, think like you humans are prone to error, guys. OK, so uh, a, a particular file which is kept in open, OK, uh, and compromise is also one of the way of breaches, guys. OK, so that is a major risk, OK, that can happen out there. So accidentally someone can keep it. OK, some some people they, when they are handling the physical document, I also OK uh, is prone to hack basically and compromise out there. OK, natural disaster. They can also pose a risk to patient data privacy and confidentiality. So if a hospital or a clinic is damaged or destroyed by a natural disaster, patient data may be lost or destroyed. That happens, right? So if a hospital goes down, they might have a physical documentation that might also breach. Basically, they might lose it. And because of that, there might be a lot of issues, guys. OK, so you need to understand how the copies have to be kept OK across for that particular data record, basically. Vendors, OK, there are multiple vendors like Providence might also be a vendor, right? So they might be vendor who might be handling data of the hospitals, guys. So Providence is also, I can say, one part of a vendor who have access to that particular patient data out there. And uh, the vendors also uh, come under compliance. So the hospitals, they 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 might say that we are not technically savvy. OK, we are not the people okay, who might support everything. So they appoint a vendor and then that vendor is responsible to handle the data, including the billing data, OK, support services, patient records, all those things. So the risk associated with patients, data privacy and confidentiality can be significant. OK, so healthcare organization need to take steps to protect uh, patient data from unauthorized access, disclosure, disruption, modification or destruction. OK, so what are the steps? OK, again, firewalls, IDS, IPS, antivirus, data encryption, how you manage control processes, all those are important. OK. Again, guys, same thing. OK, I don't need to repeat it out there. OK. So uh, when we talk of passwords and all that, OK, I want to show you something, guys, OK? So let me go back out here. So I say password generator, OK, let's see. Now there are very specialized generators, OK? You will see LastPass, very good software, guys. OK, and uh, I say use password generator. So here you can see uh, different types and combinations. So like 12 is a basic now. OK, so previously uh, I started my journey when six was considered very good. OK, then I came to eight. OK, then I came to 12. Now it, it is 12. Now 16 is there, guys. OK, so password length. OK, you can decide. OK. Then uh, here you can say easy to say, easy to read, all characters mix. OK, so here easy to say. So then uppercase, lowercase. OK, here you will see Then you can have numbers. 
out there okay or you can have symbols out here okay you can remove numbers whatever guys okay this way okay you can generate a password out here okay and then you can take this password you can copy it and use it out here this password is generated only once guys okay and not repeated but then uh, what i do is okay you can take this okay copy it okay and i, I take a notepad okay i can like paste it here and then i, I add a twist to it okay i remove so i remove certain things out here whatever so it, it is like uh, i'm not trusting that live one that particular application guys okay i change some things because this is like uh, uh what i can say uh something to reference with and then i create a password out here so it's not like just copy and paste i put it here change it out here i can record it out here i can use a wallet as well okay so i'll say john joe okay so i can use a valet so here i can say firefox okay um password manager or valet okay i can use a valet or i can use a security manager so i can use this okay Uh, password manager so all the passwords i can keep it in a centralized location okay and and i can utilize them okay there are multiple one password is there over form keeper okay whatever not password so this managers okay what they do is i don't need to remember this even see chrome password managers are there many are there okay is okay see here yeah. so in short guys uh aspect of healthcare okay and their security is important we will have a benchmark with aims later on as we go ahead guys okay we will try working on aims okay find if there is any issue because these people they don't look serious out here okay let's see uh, singapore health as well uh, what they are using okay i don't know singapore is considered very strict guys okay Singapore Health. Uh, Singa, is it available online or not? I don't know. Sing Health is, I think, Singapore Health. Sing Health. Okay. Yes, yeah, Sing Health is here. Let's see their website as well. If they are serious. interest yeah they are using interest interest is considered to be a very good uh, body basically uh, yeah they have a proper certificate if you see august 29 2022 september yearly certificate they are uh, renewing it yearly and you can get it yeah singhal uh, they are serious guys now okay so this is good <laughs> so you will see your g2 okay it's like a very a good encryption basically uh, with all the information any questions guys for today uh yes this is manoj tiran mm. yeah uh, so uh, while we are on this uh, certificate and uh, like uh, security provisions of this website we are talking about mm -hmm. i wanted to ask one question so mm -hmm. for most of the organizations out there uh, mm. like uh, at least for large scale organizations that i know they will have something like uh, some of them will be public websites uh like the singhealth.sg mm -hmm. and some of the websites will be only for internal purposes like uh, yes employees only and uh, right. or particular teams only so uh, uh going back to grassroots level let's say uh, i am an infrared admin or a network admin and there is some other team who is a development team so we mm -hmm. have an application which is supposed to be used only by development team right yes. so we block the traffic and all those things so uh, in terms of cyber security for those type of applications or what uh, those type of websites what are the standards that we should follow like all of the standards that we have been following over the ppt and the slides are for uh, public level right so accessible mm. to all of the uh, mm. people mm. right so mm. this mm. is like internal i'm talking about so yes. uh, what 
what could be the level of those type of securities yes so basically see what happens whenever you buy a certificate cost is involved out there okay so when we talk of security in terms of external and internal i consider like internal has to be treated uh, carefully as well so it's not like internal is like only internal people will be accessing the applications uh, which are be uh, used in internally will be like uh, by internal people so my the main concept of cyber security is doesn't matter who person is which person is the content should be secure the way the security platform has to be designed and developed should be like it should be secure like for example uh, i don't buy a certificate internally but then i should have a internal ca server and i should have a valid certificate uh, requested from that ca server and then for my internal websites i will deploy that certificate for my internal applications so in that way i see that all my internal applications are certified and properly valid and people can then only access this website internally so that way i can protect my data internally as well as externally so this websites which are used internally should not be exposed externally but they should not run on port number 80 they should not run on a default certificate they should be running only and only on a valid certificate that might be issued by a internal ca get it uh understood yeah uh, another question on the same thing uh, for the hmm. indian railways we saw that there was a wild card certificate right so yes. i mean yes. i remember uh, me, myself uh, like deploying uh, dif two different applications with same wild card certificate okay so wild hmm. card is right. supposed like because it is wild card it is supposed to be used across the organization uh and yes. so coming back to the previous scenario uh you said that we should if we are getting a certificate we should use it across all those right so uh, yeah. can we use those internal same certificate wild card certificate for internal as well as external websites yeah so a good question so basically um, a wild card was always designed to be deployed uh, in a in a scenario where multiple servers are there okay um um you can utilize wild card certificate okay uh, if you have like star.domain.com okay so you can utilize it anywhere it might be external or internal but but uh, basically when we are accessing something internally then our domain name will be different okay rather than externally so basically i should be able to access that server through lan as well not necessarily through wan right so my lan domain most of the time should be different okay than the wan domain so uh, uh, that's why okay i told like if you you should have a proper internal ca who will provide me certificate so in that case i can have application 1.domain.com application 2.domain.com application 3.domain.com because i can issue multiple certificates because it is a, a, a internal ca who can do that okay external domains okay are in a different way so you might have different servers different applications and you want to protect them all so rather than having a sing, multiple certificates i can buy a wildcard certificate and i can issue it that should not be a problem basically so yeah wild card certificate is used to save money so that if i have multiple classes of applications okay i save money there okay but internally i prefer that domain name changes so you should not use uh, the same certificate for internal as well as external domains getting it understood perfect perfect cool uh guys i think preeti had something uh, so i think we extended today to 1220 i told you like we will extend okay so preeti are you there preeti preeti had something yes, for yes. 10 minutes yeah preeti you have something right please yeah yeah, yeah i'm over. just sharing the link it is just a small quiz okay related uh, to module 1 okay. so yes. you can just submit your responses there Yeah. it is please share it on chat priti okay uh, so I'm that everyone sharing. can access it and uh, and they can note the name down right their name and all that okay it will ask right okay cool let's see i'll just stop sharing guys let me check as well oh okay hmm 
कुल गो एट गाइज या कोशियर यू हैड समथिंग रिकॉर्डिंग okay if you want yes. then we'll upload on uh, google drive then because directly mm-hmm. share if you have a like gmail account then it would be easy for you to access those uh, i don't think we are allowed to access the drive from our uh, official uh-huh. laptop so, so okay i'll talk to chinmay and see if uh, anything can be done on that ground okay or we'll upload yeah, on like a share point if we yeah can. or or we'll yeah microsoft on stream we will upload okay yes uh, by so, when can i have it i just wanted to cover yesterday's uh, uh, just uh, i'll check uh, but i think post lunch uh, we will able to share okay i'll mail right. the link okay and you note down her name uh, shriya yeah so i ah, mohan shriya yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah okay no problem checked. okay yeah if it's great can be shared across rather than <laughs> right so if at all uh, because we want to refer back or else uh, if you miss something right uh, it's great go back to the video and see what is happening and what for example now we started uh, create a web server there are a couple of steps right yeah. some people had okay. some things right right referring back to the video gives you quick uh, same thing right mm. priti just okay. uh, see that okay everyone has mm-hmm. something okay so i think in teams uh, you might be seeing the last recording right you should be able to see it right uh, once the recording has stopped priti yeah i am able to access all the recordings there is no problem for me i think these participants are not able to access na ah okay right. okay okay so okay. that's the okay. thing so okay. i'll try okay i'll just check, check it with, out na ah uh, yeah, yeah i'll check okay. with my team okay. and this if there is Because some last restriction time, think, we will remove that uh, yeah 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 last time i think that uh, the the last batch was able to access right the recordings Yes, yes. Uh, the the uh, there were some restrictions which were removed by our tech guy. Okay. Ah, so then that that, yeah. that is good. Yeah. okay. Please do that then. No problem. Okay. So guys, uh, tomorrow we'll be meeting same time. Okay. Let's see. Let's hope have a good day. Have okay. a great day. Yeah, Complete I, this. Yeah. Okay. Formalities. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just to yeah, check, yeah. like tomorrow is also one and a half hour session or. uh yeah yeah i i don't know uh, i can ask the people i i, I 